when Pastor Dennis said to me, would I speak today? He said to me, you can speak about whatever you like. You can talk about whatever you feel the Lord has laid on your heart. So I did what I usually do, which is I usually pray and I seek the Lord and I say, what do these people need to hear from me? What do you want me to share with them? So I believe that this is what the Lord would have me to share with you today. So I'm going to speak to you for a few moments and I'm going to challenge you. And Carlita was singing, thank you for showing me leading me to my destiny, but it ended with, I know what I'm here for. And I want to speak to you today. I want to challenge you. Do you know what you're here for? Let's turn to Genesis chapter 1. I'm going to read verse 26. I'm in the New King James Version. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. I'm going to read a few scattered verses here and there. Genesis chapter 1, verse 26 says, Then God said, let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. Let's move now to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2, and I'm going to read verse 10. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. And finally, for now, let's read 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. And I pray that God will add a blessing to the reading of his holy word. Now, over and over in scripture, I could have read many more scriptures, we read that God intentionally and strategically created humans. And that means that you and I, we're not accidents, regardless of whether or not our parents were trying to conceive, you are not an accident. I am not an accident. We are not afterthoughts. Rather, we are here because the God who created the universe, the one true and living God, decided that our presence, your presence, my presence on this earth would be beneficial. And he decided that he specifically wanted you and he specifically wanted me to be here for a divine reason. It's not an accident. God is strategic. When God makes a move, it's always a power move. When God makes a move, it's never a wrong move. So if God has decided that you are supposed to be on the earth at this time, you can be assured that it's the right move. And so there's a divine reason for our existence. What is that reason? Well, it's simple. Our reason for being here is to bring glory to God by fulfilling his plan for our lives. Now, God has graciously brought each and every one of us through a pandemic. So here we all are. We're walking the earth, we're occupying space, we're utilizing resources. But have you ever really truly asked yourself, why am I here? Now, if God's agenda was just to collect people for heaven, the minute that you give your heart to the Lord and you become a child of God, he could whisk us straight away into the heavenlies because our job down here would be done. But that's not the case. He leaves us down here for years, sometimes years and years and years. I feel like it's years and years and years and years. But, you know, as we get older, we feel that. But, you know, God leaves us down here, and it's not an accident. It's not because he doesn't know what to do with us. It's because it's a part of his strategic plan. So if you are here by God's design, God's intentional design, what are you here for? What am I here for? And that's what I want to challenge us with today. With all of your issues, with all of my issues, with all of my shortcomings, with all the things that I do that I shouldn't do and the things that I should do that I haven't quite done yet or I'm hoping to never have to do, 
God's still chosen us and he's placed us here for a reason. He hasn't disposed of us. And the reason he hasn't disposed of us is because we have purpose. You see, I don't know if it's just women who do this. I don't know if men do this with their bags. You might have a bag that you carry around. And over a period of time, you start to collect a lot of things in the bag. And some of the things are helpful, useful things, and some things aren't. Some things are just, I was out, I used a tissue, there wasn't a bin, so I stuck it back in the bag. You know, sometimes, you know, you might eat a sweet and you just stick the wrapper in your bag. But you stick things in that bag and you're carrying around this bag. And so I've learned that every now and then, I need to go through the bag. And I need to take out, does this have any use or purpose? No. And what do I do if it has no purpose? I dispose of it. That's right. And if it's got a purpose, like my phone or something that I can use, I keep it in the bag. And God could do that with us. If you have no purpose, you don't need to be here. But if there's a purpose, you still need to be here. So the fact that you're here shows that God still has a divine purpose for your life. There's a reason. He didn't look down on earth and think, oh, I don't know what to do with that one. Just let them wander around for a bit longer. No, he looked down and he knew that you had a purpose. How did God know that you had a purpose? Well, we read it earlier. Before you were conceived in your mother's womb, you were conceived in the mind of God. So God conceived us and then he created us. He lovingly and strategically deposited within us everything that we need to fulfill our destiny. And then he discharged us to our mother's womb in the earth. And for that reason, it means that you were born loaded with purpose and destiny. So do you know what you're here for? It's not meant to be a secret. We're meant to find out what we are here for. You see, God didn't wait until your mother conceived, then you were born, and then scratch his holy head and say, what can I do with this one? Now, I think that one might be able to sing, that one might be able to preach, that one might be able to, be, to work with children, that one might be able to do this, that, or the other. No, we were preloaded, predestined. The destiny was already within us. We were born with divine destiny. And the sad thing is that some of us are marching away from our destiny. That's the sad thing. Now I like to look at it like this. Pretty much these days, everyone has a smartphone. And they call it a smartphone because it can do lots of different things, lots of really clever things. You can pay your bills on your smartphone. You can send an email on your smartphone. You can play games on your smartphone. You can take pictures on your smartphone. You can record things on your smartphone. And I could go on and on. You can do your banking on your smartphone. But if you have a smartphone and it can do all of these things, but it can't make or take a phone call, it's not a very smartphone. So I want you to understand that we can fill our lives doing things that appear to be useful and productive, and they probably are. But if it's not the thing, the one thing that you were created to do, then we've missed the mark. I want to talk to you just for a moment about your destiny. You see, God knows exactly what our destiny is. God knows exactly where our destiny is and where it will lead us. God knows exactly who will assist us on our journey to the destiny. And he even knows those who will resist us as we journey to our destiny. God knows the most efficient route to our destiny. So if we are going to live our lives in destiny and purpose, it's advisable to consult with the God who knows all of that. He knows all of that. So we don't have to wander around lost. One of the things I've noticed is that people seem to be so directionless these days. Sometimes, you know, I work with young people and one week they're so excited about doing this. And by the next week they've forgotten that and they want to do something else. 
And then the week after that, they're thinking about something else. And the problem with that is that they never focus on doing what they were created to do. You were made for a reason. I had a cousin, and some years ago, he had this really wonderful car. I don't know much about cars, but it was an expensive and a wonderful car. And I only know that, not because he ever gave me a lift in it, not because you know I've ever seen him driving down the road in it, but because he took me to a garage and he showed me this car. But he doesn't drive it. It's too precious for that. So that car sits in the garage, Maybe every so often he takes it out for a spin, but he doesn't want to use it for his day-to-day -day life because the car is simply, in his, his opinion, too precious. What God has given us is to be utilized. It's not to be sat there and admired. It's not to be a secret. It's meant to be for the good of the world. That's why God has deposited you with these gifts and talents. He's deposited you in the world because you can make a difference in the world. And your destiny comes from the word des same root as the word destination. A destiny is the ultimate end or purpose for which something or someone is created. So do you know what you're here for? Do you know what your destiny is? Do you know why you were created? Do you know why some people went through what you went through? but they didn't come out how you came out. In fact, some of them never came out at all. Some of what you've been through has wiped out other people, people younger than you, people stronger than you, people brighter than you, but yet God kept you. Why? Because you're on a destiny journey. In the Bible, we have plenty of examples of people who knew what their destiny was. And maybe they didn't know to begin with, but they understood. And as we look back, we can see, and you can look at the characters and identify what their purpose was, what their destiny was, what their ultimate end was. See, Moses was born to lead the children of Israel out of captivity in Egypt. And everything that he did before then was preparation for that moment. Esther, although she was a young girl, she was born to marry King Xerxes and then use that position to save her people, the Jews, from execution and death. John the Baptist was born to prepare the way for Jesus' ministry. And Jesus was born to die and rise again and in doing so, provide a way of salvation for all those who would believe. Even Jesus had a destiny. Jesus came to the earth loaded with purpose. He was here for a season, and in that season, he had to carry out his assignment. And I want you to know, do you know what your assignment is? Do you know what you're here for? Why were you born? Why did God place you here? What's the thinking behind it? What's the holy thinking behind your presence on the earth? I always like to say, and I stress it, and I say it over and over again, God is strategic. He's a God of strategy. He's a God who, when he makes a move, his move counts. So I want to submit to you today that if God thinks that you have a purpose, if God thinks that there's things that he needs you to achieve on the earth, what about we get in line with it and we move forward with taking steps towards our destiny? I know it's not easy, it's not easy. When I grew up, my father was an elder in the church and he was also an evangelist. And although he never preached really very often in any other denomination, he preached a lot worldwide in our denomination. And there would be months when he was gone and my mom was there with the five children and he would be off preaching and then he would come back. And because he was a family man and he missed the family so much, when we were back, every single appointment he had, he would take all of us. So we spent a lot of time in church. I remember he was speaking on a Boxing Day conference one, and we said, Mom, you can't be serious. You cannot expect us to spend Boxing Day in church, but we did. And we spent pretty much, there was no day that was sacred. You know, Christmas Day, he might do a morning service and then an afternoon service somewhere else, and we would be at all of them. And so I used to see that, and I used to see the way that my mum cared for people, and I thought, that is so long. 
always being loving and always anybody come to church, come back home. And, you know, I used to think when I was little, when would we just have a Christmas to ourselves? Because when it was Christmas, everybody in the church who didn't have anywhere else to go, my mom would always have them with us. And I used to think, this is so long. When I grow up, I'm never marrying a pastor or anything like that because I don't want to do anything like that. So many years later, when the call came on my life and I realized that I was being called into ministry and people were saying to me, can you do this, can you do that? We feel you've got this call on your life. I was resistant. I didn't want to do it. Why would I want to step into something that I've seen what it's like? I've seen how it goes. You have to put other people first. You have to be spending time. Sometimes dad would be there and we have to be, shh, dad studying. You have to be studying the word. Then you have to be going to church. I don't want to do all of that. But at some point, I surrendered to my destiny. And although it hasn't been an easy path, it's the best decision that I could have made. I'm not there yet. I don't know exactly where God's leading me. He hasn't told me everything. But one thing I do understand is that I need to submit to his will for my life. <laughs> Hallelujah. He made you. And he knows what he's placed inside of you. Some of that stuff we didn't even know was there. Has that ever happened to you? I didn't know I could preach until I was asked to preach. And I wasn't expecting to be asked to preach. The church I was at at the time, it had a Women of, of Promise series. And for that month a woman from the church was to preach every Sunday. And I got a call from a minister, please, will you preach on such and such a Sunday? I was a bit like, okay, if you want me to, I'll have a go. And then got another call a couple of days later. He said, don't be put off, don't be anxious. I've just realized the Sunday I've given you is the Sunday when we're having um, a very big baby dedication. So of course, there'll be many more people in church, but don't worry, you'll be fine. And that was it. <laughs> that was it. I didn't know if I was going to be fine. I'd never preached anywhere. I didn't even know if I could do it. But I tell you what, it drove me to the Lord. I said, to, the kids were younger then. I said to Carl, just look after the kids. I'm just going to have to spend some time with the Lord. And I knuckled down. And the long story to the short story was, when I preached that Sunday, and then I did an altar call, and the altar was full. I didn't even know about praying for people. I was like, okay, God, what are we going to do here? So I prayed for someone, and she fell down. Do you know what was going on? And I kept praying and it was going on like that. And everyone was like, oh, what an anointing, wonderful. And I thought, oh, maybe God wants me to do this. And then I was never asked to preach again. Never again at that church. Never had me back at my own church. <laughs> and it was only years later that I moved on. And I'm saying God will prepare you. He will give you a glimpse of what he can do through you. And it's you to hold on to it through that time. Through those years, I, I, I had a, you know, a minister at church pull me aside. She was like a mother figure to me. And she said, Dawn, God's going to use you. You're going to preach. I, I didn't believe her, but she told me all these things that God is going to do in my life. But I thought to myself, she wouldn't tell me that unless she was pretty sure God said it. So maybe I need to listen. And I just held on to that over the years, even though I saw no manifestation of that destiny at that time. But God knew the right time. So I want to encourage you to hold on. Maybe you've seen a glimpse of it. Maybe something that God's allowed you to do. Maybe something that's touched your heart. I want you to hold on to your destiny. Hold on to it. And I want you to at least take one step, even if it's just one step, towards your destiny every day. If you do that, in a year, you'll be 365 steps closer to your destiny. If you keep going... In two years, you'll be 730 steps closer to your destiny. And if you can pull it together for three years, that's 1,095 steps closer to your destiny. Four years would mark 1,460 steps closer to your destiny. And if you did it as a five-year thing, it'd be 1,825 steps closer to your destiny. So you can see you can make progress. If each day you just take one step closer, Lord, use me today. Lord, I'm open to you today. Lord, have your way today. Lord, I may not feel like it today, but I'm going to do what you've asked me to do today. I'm sure it's not in, like that. It doesn't happen like that in Micah because everybody here is wonderful. But in the church where I pastor, I have a thing where you'll ask people to do things and they'll say, I'm oh, sorry, I can't do it this week. I've got a lot on. Sorry, I can't do it. I'm going through at the moment. Well, 
we're going through too, we have a lot on, but we have to make it happen. And I realized that people will use anything as an excuse not to do it. You know, I've got someone, I'm sorry, I, I can't, I can't, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't do anything in the service. I lost my job. You lost your job four months ago. I'm sure you've done other things. You've gotten up, you've continued living, but we sometimes just want to make excuses to not do what God has called us to do. So I want to encourage you, if it's just one step a day, but take that step because it will inevitably carry you closer to your destiny. <laughs> Hallelujah. You see, it takes time to reach your destiny. It takes courage. It takes determination. It takes prayer. It will take some fasting. It will take a knowledge of God's word, and it will definitely take divine guidance if you're going to walk in your purpose to your destiny. But it's so important that we reach it, that we do that. How determined are we to be who God created us to be? When the pandemic hit, I think it was an opportunity for a lot of us to just stop and think about that. What's going on here? What am I doing here? What's happening here? For me, some of you may not know this, but when I was 25 years old, I was diagnosed with Lofgren's syndrome. And that basically attacks your various organs and so forth. And for me, it was very aggressive and it attacked my lungs and all sorts of things. But the point I'm making is that at that point in my life, I wasn't married, hadn't met my husband or anything. They told me, you won't have children. You probably won't live to see this. Your lung capacity, my lung capacity went right down. One, at its worst, it was leveling out around 20% of what they would have wanted it to be for my age and height and all of that. And so they said to me, well, you're going to be registered disabled. You'll never work again, 25 years old, and this will be your life. That's the reality of it. But I had a destiny. And your destiny trumps everything else. It trumps everything else. You know, they said to me, what will happen is as if you, you know, if you continue to live on, your organs will gently wear themselves out. So your lung capacity will get worse. You know, your kidneys will, will not function as well and on and on and on. And I had the kidney, the function, the liver, the I, I had it and the joints. I had it everywhere. It was a hard, tough time. But here I am today by the grace of God. And I say that to let you know that nothing can stop your destiny when you're walking in it. God will make a way. God will open a door. When I go to the hospital and I have the lung function test, my lungs are still doing very badly. In fact, when COVID started, it was like, I was obviously one of the, the sheltered groups, whatever you call it. And, you know, I looked on the website because, you know, we have a website and we look and we get advice. And now, you probably will not survive this pandemic. But here we are. I actually had COVID about two months ago. But here we are, by the grace of God. A pandemic can't stop your destiny. And in fact, it was a time when I sat down and I thought to myself, I said to myself, those things that I want to do, seeing as the outlook's not looking too great for me, the things that I want to do, I need to, to get on and do them. The things that God has called me to do, the things that he's placed on my heart to do. So after years and years of procrastination, that's when I applied to do my doctorate in the pandemic. And that's when I started it. And, and I thought to myself, I, I've always wanted to learn another language. That's when I started learning French. And, and I, the other things I wanted to do, I realized now is the time to do those things. I don't know why those things are on my heart, but if God puts these things on your heart, there's a good chance that it's linked to your destiny and your purpose. God needs you to be somewhere. And, and, and the doctorate I did, I, I, I'm a teacher, so I've done education, masters and stuff in education and stuff, but I switched disciplines and I went to theology and ministry. And in that time, I learned so much. And I realized that God was preparing me so that when we're coming out of the pandemic, people need to hear something. They need to know they need someone to speak with understanding. And the study that I did helped me to get a fresh understanding. So I'm saying to you, the things that God is laying on your heart right now could be tools that you'll need in order to operate in your destiny. 
So don't ignore those things. Whatever it might be you think God is telling you to do, please, I encourage you, take the step and move forward. Now, if we're going to walk in our purpose and our destiny, please, can I have a five minute thing? Because last week he was all over the place. <laughs> Got home, I was like, what's going on? Second Timothy chapter one, verse six. Therefore, I remind you to stir up the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. And I want to do the same today. I want to remind us all, let's stir up the gift. When you're walking in your gifts, it's not always easy. Uh, my daughter, as you know, she was asked to sing today, and she wasn't very well at all this morning. She wasn't well at all. And um, I said to her, you're going to be able to go through it. You're going to be able to do it. She said, oh, well, I'll have a try. And then we came here, a little bit of a mix-up with the back end, you know, with the piano and all of that. I said, well, you're still going to, yeah, I'll have a try. And I say that to say this, that when you're doing what God has called you to do, you can't be distracted by things that don't go perfectly. You can't be distracted by these things. When God's hand is upon you, and I tell you what, as long as you're walking in your destiny, you will reach your ordained days on the earth because God knows that you're doing what he's asked you to do. You're useful. You have a purpose. You're going somewhere. I always like to say, if I'm still going, I'm going to be still growing. And I think it's important to do that. If you're going, be growing. No one wants to still be going in terms of you're still alive and you're not going anywhere. There's still things that you can do, things that you can achieve, things that you can learn. I was, saw a program yesterday, it was about Tina Turner, and I watched the program and I realized that it wasn't until she was 50 years old that she really broke through and had her first number one hit. 50 years old. Many of us want to give up long before we get to 50. Or we think 50 is the time to start sloping off. But it's not. If God has left us here, he still has work for each and every one of us to do. I said to stir up your gifts. Why? Because the kingdom of God needs the maximized, optimized version of us. You see, maximized means it's the biggest, greatest, most excellent version of ourselves. And optimized means it's the most skillful, advanced, and developed version of yourselves. And if we are going to be everything God has created us to be, and if we are going to achieve everything God has designed for us to achieve, we need to be operating as our maximized, optimized selves. I need to be the biggest, greatest, most excellent version of Dawn. I need to be the most skillful, advanced, and developed version of Dawn. And you need to be the same. You need to do it because that's what God is expecting of you. That's what God needs from you right now. You see, God can achieve and accomplish his will on the earth without us. But he has graciously brought us on board. There are some people out there who won't employ me. Some people out there who won't employ you. They don't think you're good enough. They don't think you've got enough experience. You don't fit the profile of what they want to employ. But God has chosen us. Even before we got in the earth, he chose us and he says, I want to use that person. I want that person on my team. I want that person representing me in the earth. I want that person carrying out my mandate. And that's a high honor. And if we understood that it was such a high honor, then I believe that we would do more to walk in it. Sometimes we see it as a heavy burden. Oh, it's got to sort out church again this Sunday. Oh, I've got to organize this. <gasps> Who's preaching me? You know, we get these kinds of things and whatever your role might be, we sometimes see it as a heavy burden, but actually it's a high honor. God could have chosen someone else, but in his divine wisdom, he chose you and he chose me. I want you to remember that God created us to make a difference. He didn't create us just to populate the earth. It's because he thought, you know, it looks a bit boring down there. We need some more people. Let's chuck a few more in. No, God did it because he wants us to make a difference. Ephesians 2 verse 10 we read earlier says, we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works. So God's expecting us to be doing some good works, which he prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So he's already prepared the good works before you got here. 
He looked down at the earth and he said, we need whatever it is. I am going to design and dispatch the perfect person to carry that task out. And then he made you. That's how special you are. God also didn't just create us to make a difference, but he has a desire. He wants us to make a difference. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 16 says, but do not forget to do good and to share, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. So we please God. God is happy. God is delighted when we choose to serve him. When we choose to do those things, sometimes if you think of it like a station, you know, you get saved and that's the first station. But you're not supposed to get off the train there. You've got to stay on the train because there's other stations to go to. You need to go to, 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 to maturing in Christ, that station. You need to go to serving Christ. You need to go to making a difference. Eventually, when you've gone down the line, you'll get to the stage where you're pouring back into others and so forth. But too many of us want to get saved and then jump off at Salvation Station. There's more to life than that. He didn't save you just to jump off at Salvation Station. God wants you to go on to serve him. You're his representative in the earth, and you need to do it well. You're working for the kingdom of God. You're a diplomat in the heavenly kingdom. You have to think about how you behave. You have to think about what you do because people are looking at you because you are representing the highest kingdom that there could ever be, and that's the kingdom of God. Genesis 1 verse 26 talks about when God created man. God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So when Adam was created, he came and found himself in a position of purpose and authority. And it's the same for us. We're born as babies. We don't know we have it, but we're born and there is an area, there is a position. Adam's was to, to rule the fish and the birds of the air and the creeping things. He had a role to play. You have a role to play and you were born with the authority to carry out that role. And you need to remember that. So that when you're asked to do something or when you feel the prompting of the Lord to say that you should do something, you need to understand, not only do I have the prompting of the Lord to do it, but I have the authority of the Lord to do it. Because that will help you to understand you have every right to do it. When I was ordained and I became a pastor, there were members of my family who didn't come to the ordination, not because they were busy, but because they didn't believe in it didn't believe in me being ordained. There were members of my family, well, as one member said to me, you know, when I said to them, you know, what, what was happening, and I had the meeting with, with the pastors and, and the bishop, and this is what was gonna happen. And one of them laughed and said, you, you. You know, I, I've got family members who've never stepped foot in my church, and I don't think they intend to. They love me, but they don't love the gifting that God has given me. They don't appreciate it. They don't see the value in it. They don't understand it. Someone else said to me, why are you, why are you doing this? You're just trying to make a name for yourself. Well, you've never heard of me, so if I was, I wouldn't have done a good job of it. <laughs> but it's nothing to do with that. It's just responding to God's call. And I say that to say this. It doesn't matter who else agrees with you. It doesn't matter who sees the call on your life. If God has called you, answer the call. You know, when Samuel heard the voice and he said to Eli, Eli didn't hear any voice. He said, go back and sleep. And eventually he said, well, then next time I ask you to speak to you if you can hear something. Not everybody will hear your call. Even those who may be, you know, Eli was the, was the priest. He was the person who, who Samuel was the apprentice to. But he didn't hear the call. Don't worry who doesn't hear your call. If you confirm that you've heard the call from God, then you have a responsibility to answer the call. As I said before, you arrived in the world with a specific assignment. 1 Peter 2 verse 9 says, you're a chosen generation. You're chosen. You know, 
I, I, you know, when I was a little girl and, you know, PE, I was never the best at PE. My sister was very sporty, represented the school in all sorts. I just used to like to chat with my friends and, and just get on with life like that. And, you know, so when they had two team leaders and they pick a team, I was never the first choice because people knew I wasn't going to engage. They knew, you know, it's hockey, I'm not running up and down. I'm standing at the back. I'll, I'll be goal. I'll stand in the back and we'll chat. We'll have a laugh back there and let you do all the work down the front. So sometimes you're just not chosen. Not everybody will choose you. Some people will reject you. Some people will even be disappointed when they find out that you're on their team. <laughs> want her, you want him. But the wonderful thing is God has chosen you. God wants you on his team. God sees you as an MVP, each and every one of us. And he wants to do something awesome with us. And all we need to do is align our will with his will. And even when it gets hard, just keep on moving. Even when it gets difficult, just keep on going. Because God will honor that and he will use us in a mighty way. You're a strategic component in God's plan. God put together a plan, and when he looked at the plan, your name was on it. I want to use her, I want to use him. I'm gonna put them in that position, and I'm gonna see them excel and do what they need to do. Isn't that awesome? You see, God didn't meet you and then find a vacancy for you. God created you. Sorry, God had a vacancy and then he created you to fill it. So you were made for that role. You were made to fulfill that position. You have every right to be there. It doesn't matter who doesn't get behind you. It doesn't matter who doesn't understand it, who doesn't appreciate it. You were called by Almighty God to that position. And in spite of your ability, in spite of your disability, in spite of your, your personality, in spite of your proclivities, in spite of anything and everything about you, God chose you. And he knew that you could do it. And he knew that he'd placed everything inside of you to do it. So now it's time for us to move forward. The world needs what God has placed inside you. He needs it. He needs your abilities and he needs your capabilities. Your abilities are your talents and your skills, your aptitude, your competence, and your capability is your capacity and your potential. So God needs your skill and he needs your potential. He needs you to do what you need to do so that he can achieve what he has designed for you to achieve in the earth. God can do it without you, but he chose you to do it. He'd like you to do it. He's given you the ability to do it. So why not do it? If you reject it, if you don't do it, many people in life, and even if you look through the scriptures, many people, they, they, they went off the rails with their destiny. They didn't get all the way to where they're supposed to be. I'm not gonna name names, but they didn't get all the way to where they were supposed to be. They were derailed. One was derailed by a neighbor just, you know, showering in her garden or whatever it was. And, you know, others was derailed when a woman, you know, lay your head in my chest and his long hair was flowing. People, you know, they get derailed by things. But the reality of the matter is God has chosen you. Let's not get derailed. One of the things that I like to tell people is that you are 100% unique. There is literally only one of you in the earth. My sister has identical twin daughters, and they're two different people. They've got different personalities. One's married, one's not married. They've got different situations in life. It doesn't matter if they look the same, even if they're dressed the same and people can't tell the difference. They are two different people. You are unique. Don't confuse being unique with being rare. Rare means there's only a few of you. You're not rare, you're unique. There's only one of you. God made just the one of you and placed you in the earth, loaded with destiny. If we're going to live in our purpose, we need to understand that. Yes, someone else can do what you do, but only you can do it the way you do it. 
Only I do what I do the way I do. Only you do what you do the way you do. And it's all equally valid. We don't have to do the same things. You know, in the Bible, it's all likened to a body and a body having a different role. And I've never seen my heart. I don't know what my heart looks like. I don't bathe my heart. I don't cream my heart. I don't feed my heart specifically. But my heart is vital. My heart can't see. My heart can't help me to walk. My heart can't think. But my heart is vital to me operating successfully. And then you might think of something much smaller that you need. I had some problems um, a few months ago and it resulted in me losing some of the hearing in my left ear and so forth. And I realized that even though I had two ears, I missed the one that doesn't work very well right now. Everything has its role. Everything has its purpose. And whatever your purpose is, it might be a visible one. It might be an invisible one to many people. It might be one that people think is a glory getter. Because, you know, when people see people, they say, oh, isn't he handsome? Isn't she beautiful? Because your face is what they can see. But there are other things in you. You might have a really wonderful kidney that works well. And nobody compliments you on that. But it's doing a good job. And if the kidney decided to stop working, nobody would see your handsome face or your beautiful face or whatever it might be. So everything has its role. And everything works together to achieve the common goal of bringing God glory and achieving his purposes on the earth. And that's what we need to remember. You're unique. Yes, somebody else could do it, but it wouldn't be you. It wouldn't be the way you do it. It wouldn't be using the gifts that you specifically have. So you need to value yourself because God values you. We have been designed, we've been programmed, and we've been instructed to go into the world and build the kingdom of God. That's our job. If you don't know what your purpose is, there'll be specifics of it. But the general overarching purpose is that we are to go and to build the kingdom of God. So it's important for us to walk in our destiny. Now, of course, I don't know who I'm speaking to, and salvation is the first turning on the route to your destiny. If you've never given your heart to the Lord, if you don't know him as your personal savior, then you're definitely not on the route to your divine destiny. That's the first turning on the route. But once you've taken that route, you have to keep going. And each and every one of us is responsible for reaching our destiny. I can't do it for you, and you can't do it for me. I have to do it for me, and you have to do it for you. You have to take that responsibility. And I want to say to you that if you've never thought about it before, now is a really great time to start thinking. We've seen, because of events over the past couple of years, that life is so frail. It can just happen overnight. Things can change. We're on the clock. We don't know when, but we do know that he will return. And when he cracks the sky, I want to have achieved everything that he wanted me to achieve in that time frame. I want to be able to say, I did what you asked me to do. I want to hear the words, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And I want to encourage you to work to hear that. It doesn't really matter at what stage in your life you're at, whether you're young, whether you're in the middle years, whether you're older, it really doesn't make a difference. God can use all of you. Sarah gave birth. What age was she now? I think she was, a, she, yeah, she was 90, wasn't she, when she gave birth. I'm not suggesting you're going to do that. What I am suggesting is you can still be a part of God's strategic plan. The fruit of her 90-year-old womb is what went on, as we know, to produce that lineage. So I want to say to you right now, whatever it is, 
that you feel God is calling you to, let's stop procrastinating. Let's stop making excuses. Let's stop looking for reasons not to do it and start looking for reasons to do it. Let's stop thinking that we can do it tomorrow and let's see how we could maybe start today in some small way, walking in our purpose, walking towards our destiny, being who God has designed us to be. As I say, as I close, I want you to remember that your life is valuable and it's needed. Because although someone else can do it, it's awesome and wonderful when you do what God has called you to do yourself. You don't want to be pushed aside and God has to bring someone in to do your job. It's much nicer, it's much better. It brings glory to God and it brings you a sense of being on purpose and, and fulfillment because you're doing what you were designed to do. You don't want to be like the car in my cousin's garage, just polished and sat and looked at and admired and shown to a few special people. You want to be on the road. You want to be taking people from A to B, which is what you were designed to do. Your purpose counts. Your life is needed. Your destiny matters. Can you imagine the impact that we as believers could make in the world if we all walked in our purpose towards our destiny? Can you imagine how it would change our community? Can you imagine how it would impact the area in which we live? Can you imagine if all over the world, Christians were all taking up the call to walk in their purpose and pursue their destiny? Can you imagine how it would impact the world? There is absolutely no doubt that God created each and every one of you with purpose. But the question is, do you even know what you're here for? If you don't know, I want you to start to seek the Lord and find out why you're here. What is it that he wants you to do on the earth? What is your role? What is your job? No one takes up a job without understanding what their roles and responsibilities are. So in the kingdom of God, let's find out what are my roles and responsibilities? What has God called me to do? And then as you understand that, I urge you and I will be praying for you to walk in your purpose and to ensure that you reach your destiny. God bless you. Thank you for listening to the message today. We hope it blessed you. And if it did, please like, comment and subscribe for more videos from Micah. And don't forget to click the notification bell to see when they're uploaded. Thank you for joining us today. We'll see you in the next one.